hello good evening so in this video i want to show you how to draft an english trouser now you have your tools your stretch ruler your hip curve your pattern master so these tools are essential and of course your measurements and um, lastly your scissors so these are the measurements i have for my clients now your scissors is also essential so these tools must be gotten now once you have them then you fold your fabric now the fabric must be folded from the wrong right side facing each other right that the wrong side facing up and the right side facing the wrong side facing the table so you have to bring your stretch ruler and then place at the base mark out the baseline now the reason for this baseline is to make it straight so you must mark it out in this form after which you mark out the side lines as well now these lines are very essential to mark out because it gives you a straight base and size seam or side line which we use in drafting your trouser now bear in mind that any drafting that does not have a straight base will never be straight so you must make sure your lines are marked out properly this way now the next to do is you mark two inches there for your hemming or folding of the trouser leg mark it in two different points and then connect in this form please bear in mind that two inches is the maximum inch you need to add for your trouser hemming or folding then after that you apply your customer's trouser length which the length i have is 38 inches so you mark that eight inches there this way and you also mark it somewhere inside as well that's eight inches now this drafting is called the gradient line method i will show you guys how to go about it just follow the steps i am showing you here sequentially then there i have my west line then from my west line i measure to get my crouch which the crouch is gotten from the formula i gave you guys then i got my crouch to be 10 10 inches then i marked my 10 inches in that position and then i will connect the line as shown after this the next thing to do now is to get my knee line so the knee line could be gotten by measuring the customer's knee but here i am using the formula measure the distance between the crouch depth and the ankle line divided by two and comma by three as you can see i have 28 divided by two is 14 minus three is 11 so i am marking 11 inch from the crouch depth so draw the line as shown so when you have marked out this line in this form so here we have your waistline your crouch line your knee line your ankle line and of course your hem line then after that apply the customer's hip by four measurements on that line this way and then add extra what two inches now these two inches you're adding in standard right then measure the total distance from that two inches all across the hip line get the middle that divide the distance by two so that center line is what you apply all through the knee line and the ankle line so that line is what they call the gradient line which simply means that it divides the trouser into two equal parts right that for the front panel into two equal parts so all the measurements on both sides of these lines must be equal all the measurements applied on both sides of this trouser must be what equal then connect the line as shown so here after that you go to your knee so the knee i had was 16.5 so i will just make it to be 17 divided by 2 and divided by 2 again that's almost divided by 4 in summary 
So the verb be on me by four. So I added extra half an inch to that, you know, for weaving and joining effect. Though the back panel will still house the extra two inches which is needed to um, join the trouser. So I just added half inch to this in order to give it room to still fit in properly after you must have still you know weaved and done every other sewing accessories. So here the ankle is 13 and a half. So I used extra half to add it. That divided by two, I marked at um, 3.5, 3.5, that's seven inches. Then I drew this line to come up in this form. Please note that this line must be straight as possible. The line should not fall in, neither should it fall out. It should be as straight as possible. Whatever measurement you have on the ankle will be applicable. Somewhere the line has stopped. Then bring your hip curve and then connect the line as shown. Connect the line to the knee line and then turn your hip curve in this form. Please also note or watch how I place my hip curve. The placement it is also very important so you understand how these things are being used because this gives you an artistic marking or drafting. Now after that, connect this one as well from that same position and then make sure you still have your hip cuff placed and then connect to the extra two inches on the hips. So after that, the next to do here is to mark my waistline. So the waistline I have is 32 inches. Divide by 4, you have it to be 8. Then plus extra 1 inch. Please note importantly, 1 inch was added to the waistline. Then connect the 1 inch on the waistline to the hip position. The line comes in this form. Then from there, come up by 2 inches which serves you for the hip point. Because the hip point is stated to be 2 inches above the crouch depth. Then slope the trouser waist by half of an inch. Then the sloping should end somewhere at the midpoint of the waistline. Then connect the 2 inches on the crouch and 2 inches up from the hip line going to the waist line and you're good to go. So the next to do now is to put your pocket. So the pocket I how I use is pocket of 2.5 inch width by 7 inches depth. So I will maintain the same measurements but this could change when you're making for kids or for smaller sizes. So now I will show you guys how the drafting is done. Or the cutting rather will be done or is done as well so you cut from that line as shown so you cut out all the areas that is meant to cut out so next now is to bring the back panel and then you arrange it in this form make sure that you follow the lines proper you extend the line on the crouch to the back panel then you are to Add two inches extra on all of these areas so the back panel will, will be two inches bigger than the front panel so you have to you know carefully adjust the panels of the trouser to accommodate the back extra two inches so add two inches all through this area now these two inches will um, give the front panel all the allowances needed for the sewing, right? So that you don't need to bother yourself again about the sewing proper. So when you have known this, then connect the lines in twos. Connect the lines in twos. Carefully connect all through this way. And then, after which, you will now start... Um, adding one and a half inch on the west part and then two inches on the hip area as well then extend the line in this form carefully do this extend the line in this form just draw it up to the west line then use your freehand sketch and connect there with a curve you can still make use of your hip curve in the connection then for the back trouser west raise it by one and a half inch 
or two inches maximum for a bigger size measurement right then slant it all through to the front waistline and you are good to go so the next you will do now is to also draft it out or cut it out so you cut all through to this point cut all through to this point making sure that everything you need is properly measured and taken note of so cut all through this way then after this the next i will show you guys will be on the components the, the cutting measurements and every other thing needed for the um, trouser to have a complete set or complete components of stitching or sewing so now this is the um, pocket facing so the measurement is 3.5 inches width by the length of seven eight uh, by the length of 11 rather 3.5 by 11 right in order to cover the lining which we use in doing the pocketing also don't forget to differentiate the front and the back by simply marking a chalk on the wrong sides you know then this one here is the zip flap or yeah the zip fly then the measurement is 2.5 inches by the length of 10.5 or 11 but then it should not be more than the customer's crouch depth so the next here i will call it will be my band right my band the bit loop you know um and every other areas needed to be cut so if you find this video interesting kindly watch it practice it and also give me a feedback on how your own process or procedure came out then i before you cut the band you have to mark out the baseline you know in order to remove every unequal edge but then the width of the band is 2.5 inches width then the length is solely your customer's wear circumference over 2 plus extra 5 inches to 7 inches now bear in mind that this band uh, this fabric is on fold so i have enough of the length to augment or cover the waist of 32 inches which i had in the drafting stage so cut the band in this form as shown cut it all through this way then later on the gumming process will continue and then subsequently the sewing as well but bear in mind that the gumming for all english trousers are the same and the sewing as well are the same the only thing different is on the drafting stage and one or two areas like measurements you know you need to procure your customer's exact choice or something similar right so now after all the necessary you know components you have drafting don't forget as well to drop chocks on them in order to make detecting the front and the back easier for you so next i have here is my bit loop so my, my bit loop or bit holder is 1.5 inches width by the length of 24 um, right that's 1.5 inches in drafting then 24 inch is the length then each loop is six inches right and as four inches rather and there are six loops in the trouser making it to be 24 inches by the width of 1.5 in the cutting stage so after you must have done this the next to do here is to cut the welt pocket placket so which the measurement i have here is three inches width and then the the, the length will be seven inches or 7.5 so having done this now i uh, believe draft trouser drafting will no longer be a problem to you and to anyone who might have come across this video so do well to like comment and share and tell me how impactful this video might have been to you so here i have my welt pocket placket which is three inches or 3.5 inches width however by the length of 7 inches or 7.5 you know some persons want this to be big in order to have more room to fold to the test or desire after which also learn the habit of 
looking for pieces of fabric and cut it out then lock or tie all the trouser components you have measured today in order to safeguard them because if you don't keep them safe you might find one of the vital points of the or vital component of the trouser all right guys thanks for watching see you guys in my next video and my next episode do have a lovely learning bye bye for now